and horses pulled almost all vehicles on London streets. 15 years later, horse-drawn transport has virtually disappeared. And now we have more than a billion cars on our roads worldwide. Otto's genius and Benz's vision led to one of the most extraordinary transformations of the 20th century. I thought it was really funny seeing you driving around in a motorised pram, mm. particularly when you think that only 20 years later they're building this. Now, we're in the heritage centre of Rolls-Royce, sitting in what is probably the most famous car in the world. Yep, this is the original Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. And although it looks fantastic, it was also the most reliable car of its time. It could go a 1,000 miles without repair. And that was unusual at the time. It was called the best car in the world. And it was the car that put British car manufacturer back into the international race. OK, so why was it so reliable? What had he done? Well, I mean, the heart of this sort of beating engine is Otto's four-stroke cycle. But Royce is one of those incremental inventors, and you can just see all the tweaks, the radiator, the oil system, and the precision engineering that makes this a modern car engine. Now, the thing that I've been thinking about since I got in the car is how much? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. I am asking <laughs> I can't afford it. In the region of 40 or 50 million. Oh, wow. No, it's worth it. It is. <laughs> Now, back in 1907, when this car was built, it was a luxury item. Only the really rich could afford it. If the car was going to change the world, it had to come down in price. Sometimes it's not the invention that makes the difference, it's how you build it. While the car companies of Europe were building a small amount of vehicles by hand, American Henry Ford decided to do things a little differently. He saw the potential of this new invention and decided everyone, given the chance, would want to own one. He had to find a way to make it cheaper. In 1913, Ford opened the world's first continuous moving assembly line. It built only one model, the Model T. Ford's innovation was that assembly workers remained stationary while the car was moved by a system of pulleys and conveyor belts. The process was divided into 84 steps, and the same worker repeated the same step as each car moved through. With hundreds of workers all repeating one task on hundreds of cars, building time was slashed from a few days to just an hour and a half. The rest is history. An affordable car became the most popular form of transport ever. Now, 60 million are produced every year. Ford's methods have changed the way we make everything, from cars to jet engines. <laughs>